In its inception, pozole was nothing more than corn, water, and humans. It predates the Spaniards landing on our land. It was an Aztec religious soup, if you would. Aztec empires were known for being amazing warriors, and a result of their conquest, they had a lot of captives. They would tear the heart out of the captive, throw it in a pot, and it was a tribute for the gods that they would eat. Pozole for me is an incredibly personal thing. Pozole is in our blood. My name is Claudette Zepeda, and I fancy myself a Mexican cultural anthropologist. I have traveled the entire country, and this recipe is very near and dear to my heart. Pozole is essentially a hominy broth. The original word, pozol, means boiling, stirred. Every family from north to south makes pozole however they wish. Every mom is right. This is just how I do it. My aunt would tell me that I had to use a pig head. I like the trotters just because it has a lot of gelatin in it. I like to wrap them in a cheesecloth. And this I learned after having to fish out bones out of my pozole for about two hours and almost breaking my tooth on a missed one. The Aztecs truly believed humans were descendants of corn. So the fact that the sacrifice of the captives was cooked in the broth, the corn was another tribute to man. The staple corn for pozole is called cacahuacintle. This is already treated with the nixtamalization process. Nixtamalization made it possible to unlock as much nutritional value that we can from corn. We're right now going to flavor the corn as much as possible with pork shoulder. Pozole was a sacrificial soup for the gods. By the time the conquest happened in 1500s, Spaniards landed on our coast. The priests and the friars said it's against the religion to eat humans. Here's some pigs. Now we have kombu as well. It's natural MSG, it's a flavor enhancer in Japanese foods. and. Because I grew up between Tijuana and Guadalajara, in Tijuana we have a huge Chinese and Japanese cultural influence. We are a cuisine of immigrants, so why not take advantage of all the ingredients that have come through? We're gonna add onion and garlic. The corn's gonna take on that first punchiness and spiciness of the garlic and the onions and the herbs. For the adobo, it's the chili paste. These are guajillo and anchos. I love these two chilies. Make sure your chilies are pliable. Take the seeds out. Mexico gave chili to the world. When the colonization period started, Mexico had 300 seeds that we were already growing. Corn, tomatoes, chilies, these are all things that are indigenous to our land, and we ended up giving them to the world. Can you imagine Indian food without chilies? A dish that I think is very unique to Mexico, I'll travel and cook somewhere across the world, and they'll say, oh no, no, we eat the same thing. Because the same people that went and set up the missions and the churches throughout Mexico, they moved to a different part of the world that they were also taking over. And you see it in Africa, different parts of Asia. That's the beauty of food. All this stuff is connected in some way. I have my water boiling and I turn it off. I'm gonna drop the chilies to just get soft enough to make a smooth adobo. This is a result of hard work. My aunt in Guadalajara had a restaurant for 40 years, started just selling pozole. The first time I made this soup this way, I just wanted my aunt to try it and my mom to try it and get their seal of approval. I was terrified and they said that it was different was the first thing and she said, oh no, but good. <laughs> They're really hard to please. In adobos, it doesn't call for fire roasting, but I think char is absolutely an ingredient. It's a flavor. You don't want to burn it to get bitter, you just want the outside to char a little bit. It does not take long for the chilies to be soft enough for the adobo, so we're just gonna fish them out. Oaxacan cuisine has avocado leaves. For me, it's their secret ingredient because it gives sauces a different flavor and you don't really know why. So you get the leaf and you crunch it as much as you can and it's gonna give you all that herbaceous, beautiful je ne sais quoi to your adobo. We're gonna go straight into the blender with all of this. You're gonna use the chili water if you need more liquid. My oregano. Japanese bonito flakes is 100% representative of how I grew up in the North, eating Chinese food and Japanese food on a weekly basis. During World War II, after the internment camps, everyone fled to Mexico, and that particular region of Mexico is 
so beautiful in the different cultures that exist there. There's Russian, Italian, Chinese, Japanese in the north. These are my touches to the stuff that I had in my pantry growing up. Even though it looks smooth, it must be very well strained because the skin adds that bitterness that you don't want in your broth. Pozole doesn't get made if you're in a bad mood. Pozole has to come from a place of love. Make someone fall in love with you if you make it right or hate you if you make it wrong, I guess. I am a Puritan when it comes to pozole only being red because I am from Guadalajara. So the red, white, and green, the three pozoles that are known throughout Mexico are indicative of the flag colors and you'll find that in a lot of different things. Chili, tomato, and onion, red, white, and green, those are our trinity. It's a conversation I have often about what makes recipes pure. Some recipes will call for 50 ingredients and you go to a house and they use six. They won't even use onions and garlic because it's just not available to them. So it's beautiful to just see how from one place to another it evolves out of necessity. I'm gonna add white vinegar. I'm just gonna finish with a little bit of salt. Once your corn is as plump as it can be, you can fish out the onions and the garlic and the kombu, and you can reserve these onions and garlic and make a salsa out of it. So now we're ready for the adobo. This will also help thicken the broth. Nowadays, you can have pozole every day of the week, but pozole started out as a celebratory religious meal. You'll find it at weddings, the recalentado, which means the reheating. Weddings last several days. Imagine eating this after a really long party the next day. This is the perfect hangover cure. It's just really, really good. I like to add salt when I'm flavoring it towards the end. We're just doing a little at a time. It's a big pot. The best pozole that you can ever have is the next day because this stock is going to reduce. The flavor development just changes crazy. Now we're gonna fish out the trotters. If you see a trotter, think of human feet if you would. How many bones are in our feet? Pigs are no different. Lots of little bones. Just kinda gotta get in there. It's got some meat, so we're gonna keep that. Take all the excess fat off. You just want the skin. And just little strips. Here you can pickle it with lime. When colonization was happening, they needed to tell the Spanish kingdom what was happening in the New World. There's pictures depicting the ceremonies of the Aztecs eating human flesh. It's beautiful to see how evolution through really tragic periods of history transformed something that started off very simple into something so complex, so flavorful. So if you're not gonna eat this all, you either keep it on a low simmer on your stove or you cool it down properly and as fast as possible so the nixtamalization process doesn't ferment the soup. Let's go ahead and serve this up. Fresh oregano. One of my first jobs when I was a child at my aunt's restaurant was doing the garnishes for the pozoles. It's always gotta be iceberg lettuce, shredded, as fine as you can get it. And then for the radish, this is just thinly sliced. A little bit of lime, a lot of lime. We're gonna add the little pig's feet. And you have pozole. It's crazy to think that this beautiful soup started off as a very tragic, kind of gory story. I do taste this deep, rich broth. The pork is just kind of melting in your mouth. The pozole has evolved so much. Different hands get involved and different cultures come into play. I'm excited to see where my kids take this because that's the beauty of cuisine all over the world. It has no idea its history. It's quite precious.